With live video, you can do some really awesome things in Keynote, like literally dropping yourself into your presentation so that your live video feed is right there on the slide next to the content that you want to talk to your students or your audience about. You can also interact with the content on your slide, adding some engaging effects, and you can layer in content around you on the slide. You can bring in multiple forms of media. You might want to bring in a graph that you want to analyze with your students and look for some trends that you can discuss with them. Or maybe you want to bring in a map and there might be some location on the map that you know your students always have trouble finding and now you can visually point it out to them. and analyze how well their code ran. If you're presenting live in a Google Meet, then live video in Keynote is a great way to put yourself right on the slide next to the content that you wanna talk about with your students. Even when you're not presenting live in a Google Meet, live video in Keynote can be an awesome tool to create some video effects that aren't available in iMovie. By using screen recording along with live video in Keynote, you can record yourself, record your presentation, and then pull that video into iMovie to do some further editing with. How do you use live video in Keynote? Well, let's take a look. First of all, let's get out of this presentation. Then let's add another slide to this slide deck by going to the bottom left corner of the screen, click on the plus, and let's choose a slide template to bring in. I'm gonna just choose this section title slide and then I'll click on this text box and shorten that up over on the left side of the screen. Now to bring in the live video, I'll go up to the plus and the toolbar at the top. And on the media tab, I'm going to go down to live video. And there's my live video feed. Now Keynote treats this live video feed just like an object. So I can grab any of these blue handles around the border and resize this video feed box. I can also drag this box around just like any object on the screen. And I can even format this like other objects. So while this is selected with the blue handles around it, I'll go up to the formatting paintbrush. Uh, on the live video tab, I can click here on mask to change this mask around the video from a 16 by nine format to a four by three. I could make it square. I could turn it into a circular video mask, or I can use custom to really create any custom size that I want to mask my video feed. I'm gonna go back to a four by three size here and then back to these live video formatting controls. I can use the corner radius tool here to increase that corner radius or the rounding of those corner edges. And you can see that's creating a nice round effect on that video feed. I could also grab this green dot and really pull that in to quickly adjust that corner radius as well. I'm going to go back here to the formatting palette and back to the live video feed. It's automatically going to bring in my front facing camera. Now on the iPad, I can add another camera. I could also add the back camera or the rear facing camera on the iPad that maybe I want to capture some kind of action that's going on behind the iPad that I'm focused on that I want to talk about. And I want to maybe keep two video feeds on the screen at once, um, the back camera and the front camera. To do that, I could tap over here on this arrow or chevron, and then right up here at the top, you can tap on this plus to add another camera. And then you would type in the name of that source. So maybe I would call this back camera. And once I've named that, then I can tap down here to reverse the camera from the front camera to the back camera. Now, the case on my iPad is actually blocking the back camera, so we can't see anything right now, unfortunately. 
but that's how I could add another camera and then I could just tap on add here and then I would have two video feeds at once on the screen. Since the case is blocking my back camera right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and tap on cancel. But that's how you can add a second video feed or a second live video to your slide and you can turn the cameras on and off by tapping here on the little camera on this live video feed. And you can turn it back on just by tapping back on that again. I'll just go ahead and select our live video feed again and go back to the formatting palette so that we can see what else you can format here on the live video feed. I can also use this scale slider to really zoom in on my video. So if I click away now, you'll notice that I'm much more zoomed in than I was before and I can see less of myself there. I'll go ahead and select that video feed again and go back to the formatting palette and I'll just zoom back out. I can also go to the styles tab here and I could put a border around my video feed. So maybe I want that uh, photo look to my video feed just like images. So now it has that nice white border around it. I could also add any other sort of border that I want as well by making sure that this border is turned on and clicking on something other than the photo album option. Then I can adjust the color of that border to maybe be something that stands out more on my slide. And I can also adjust the width of that line to make that border much thicker. I can even go to the Arrange tab here and I could move this video feed from the front to the back. And then what you'll notice is now when I drag this video feed around, it actually is behind other objects on the slide. And because Keynote is treating this video feed like an object, while it is selected, I can go up to the three dots or the More menu and go to Animate. And I can add an action. So maybe if I'm talking about gravity, then it might be really appropriate to add that anvil effect to bring that video feed in. Then I can click on Done. I can even click on the slide itself and go back to the three dots or the More menu back down to animate, and now I can add a transition, maybe something like the magic move effect to create that smooth video transition. And when I click on done, it will duplicate the slide. And then on the second slide, I can go in and I can adjust this video feed to be larger. And I'll go back to the formatting palette here and change this live video setting for the mask back to 16 by nine so that it's more the size of the slide itself. And now I can just drag that out with the corner handle, grab a hold of that corner handle. There we go. And make it the size of the slide. And I can also make sure that it doesn't still have that anvil effect on it. All right, it does not. So now when I back up here and run this slide deck, there's my video effect. It drops in that smooth transition of magic move, makes it full size. And then I can start to layer in other objects around myself on the slide here. Um, again, I might want to have a title up here. Something to describe what I'm going to talk about. I could format that more. I can go back to the plus menu and the media tab and I could bring in other photos and video. I can go to the graphs tab and I could grab a graph like I had earlier. And then with the corner handles, I could resize this and put it over here beside myself. Again, I could go back to the plus menu, the shapes menu to bring in that map. There it is. Drag that out larger and place it up here at the top. 
So in iMovie, I can only have one picture in picture item. Now in a live video and keynote, I can immerse myself in multiple different types of media. So I'm not limited to just one picture in picture option. Now I can have as many as I can fit on this slide with myself. And to show this in Google Meet, I would just play this slide presentation like I normally would after I've started the Google Meet and go through the slide deck. If I wanted to use live video to create those awesome video effects that aren't available in iMovie, something like this slide where I have multiple different pieces of media surrounding myself. And earlier we saw with the Sphero video, I could even have multiple different videos that I pull in as well. Uh, to do that, I would just build up my slide and get it all set the way that I want, and then use the screen recording feature of the iPad, just like I'm doing right now, to create this video. And when I run the slide deck then, that video will be recorded and saved to my Photos app. Then I can pull it from my Photos app into iMovie and combine it maybe with some other video footage, or I could edit it further if I wanted to and then export it out as a video. I can't wait to see what you're going to create with the live video effect in Keynote.